wedding and children. I can't wait for you anymore. I don't want to lose you. I don't either. Three reasons why I shouldn't buy you a drink. I'm sorry I'm late. Why are you still standing here? Walk away. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. I have these two front row tickets to the Giants game, and I was wondering if you'd go with me. You know I never hurt you, right? Leah, open the door! Hello, everyone. Welcome to FLIQS Networke. We are back with another movie recap. In today's video, we will be taking a look at a suspense thriller film in which a diabolical man becomes obsessed with the woman. He met the obsessions and became so real that quite a lot of people get killed in the process. Without any further delay, let's jump into the movie. With a fulfilling career and a loving relationship, lobbyist Levon Sandalathan seems to have it all. Things come crashing down when Dave, her long-term boyfriend, questions her future plans for marriage and a family. The resulting breakup leaves Lee heartbroken until she meets the charming and handsome Carter Duncan, Michael Lealy. Soon the budding romance turns dangerous as Carter reveals his volatile nature, forcing Leah to turn the tables on the man she thought was Mr. Right. Is the perfect man appropriate? The MPAA rated the perfect man PG for some mildly suggestive content. Lee and Dave have a great relationship, and the movie starts with the scene that showcases this aspect of theirs. Leah is heading to work, and Deep is asking to delay her trip to work for a little longer. During this time, she reminds her boyfriend that they have a party to attend that evening following which she heads to the office. On way to work, she stops at the coffee shop where she sees a very attractive man. While getting her cup of iced coffee, she and the man have a quick moment in which he allows her to take his cup of coffee. The rest of the day passes, and in the evening, she and her boyfriend, Dave, head to their friend's wedding anniversary party. Their Leah seems to be having a good time until she sees Steve interact with the son of their friends. Leah gets quite emotional and starts wishing she had kids of her own. On returning back home, she discusses this with Dave, and Dave seems to be totally ticked off by what Leah is saying. In fact, the argument between them got so heated out that Dave asked Leah to never talk about such expectations of hers ever again. Leah gets hurt and decides to call off things with Dave. Dave and Leah split up and go their own ways. Leah is heartbroken and decides to put all her focus on work so as to forget the emotional roller coaster that she is on. Due to her breakup apart from breaking up, she decides to spend some free time meeting up with her friends. So she makes plans to meet Karen for dinner, but unfortunately Karen cancels at the last minute as her son was unwell. Leah is at the bar sipping on her drink when a man approaches and tries to hit it off with her. Leah is not very comfortable being in such a scenario and keeps turning him down. However, the man refuses to give up and continues bothering her. That's when someone from the back finally intervenes and stops this man from bothering her. The person who intervened was the same handsome man she had met in the coffee shop. The two of them start talking, and they introduce themselves to each other. That's when she finds out that his name is Carter Duncan, and that he's an aid specialist. Both of them talk for a long time, over dinner following which Carter gave Lee his card. The next day, while Lee is at work, she gets a call. The call is from Carter, and she is quite shocked on receiving this call, as she did not recall giving him her number. But he later convinces her that since he isn't an expert, he can easily get people's contact numbers. It is signed to meet at a regga club. After having a great night, Lee heads back home only to find out that she left her keys. Lee always keeps a set of spare keys under a fake rock. Miss McCarthy, her neighbor, happens to hop out of her home and notices them. Lee introduces Carter as her boyfriend. Carter and Lee seem to be having a great relationship, and Lee decides to take the relationship to the next level by calling Carter to San Francisco to meet her family. Carter agrees to go and ends up bonding pretty well with her family, especially her father who he took to see a baseball game. After the fun-filled weekend, the two of them head back home. On the way back, Carter decides to profess his love to Leah and Leah seems quite happy. But on the way back home, Carter happens to get into a fight with a man who he thought was hitting on Leah due to Carter assuming so he got out of the vehicle and beat the man to Pope. Before the gas station's owner stepped out and threatened Carter at gunpoint to get out. Before he called the cops, Leah had not seen this side of Carter and got terribly scared. Leah then asks Carter to meet for dinner and breaks the relationship up. Carter apologized, but Leah does not seem interested in his apologies. Carter is heavily agitated by Leah as she continues to ignore his calls. She is forced to change her number due to the number of times. He stalks her everywhere she goes and eventually ends up breaking into her home using the spare set of keys that she kept outside. When he enters, he does quite a few weird things that an obsessed person would do and drinking from a wine glass that Leah used. He also steals her cat and hacks into her computer. Leah is both scared and angry with Carter's behavior and gets the police involved. In order to file a restraining order, the police say that she needs to get solid proof. Detective Hanson and feels Leah's case to be quite genuine, and so he looks into Carter's file. A while later, Leah was leaving her office and found a note accompanied by a red rose. The note reads, if I can't have you, no one will. Leah goes to the police, gets a restraining order against Carter, and subsequently he is fired. Dave, Leah's ex-boyfriend, gets in touch with her and claims to miss her. The two of them reconcile and are back together. Carter sees this while stalking Leah and gets angry. He sees them sitting in a bar and enters it. Leah tells Dave about Carter, and Dave decides to knock some sense into Carter, but that doesn't seem to work. 
Lee is back at the police station as Carter violated the restraining order, but Carter defended himself stating that a restaurant is a public place and doesn't really account for violating anything. Detective Hansen and Carter get physical during this meeting. Carter is still agitated with Leah and enters her home to install cameras in her home. Miss McCarthy, Leah's neighbor, finds this suspicious and questions Carter. Carter panics and decides to end Miss McCarthy's life. Before she could tell anyone, Carter pushes Miss McCarthy's down a flight of stairs and she dies. Her body is discovered a week later when Miss McCarthy's daughter gets the police involved. Carter is busy spying on Lee's house and captures all her private moments. He then broadcasts these moments that he captured to Leah's employees and business associates. Leah is suspended. Due to this, Leah is in her home and is with Dave. She decides to give him the birthday present that she had purchased for him. Prior to their breakup, the gift was a watch which had the word I will always love you engraved in it. Dave loves the gifts and says that he would never take the watch off. Carter watches all this happening from his home and gets further infuriated. He decides to end Dave's life. Dave heads off to a business meeting in Santa Barbara, only to endure himself in a car crash that was caused due to Carter's messing with the mechanics of his car. Carter follows Dave on this trip to ensure that he dies, but when Dave leaves the car wreck in an injured state, Carter goes up to him and suffocates him to death. He takes off Dave's watch from his hand and keeps it with him. The detectives reach Lee's house with the sad news of Dave's death. She is emotionally torn apart and attends his funeral. When she comes back, she indulges in a quick nap, following which she wakes up to find the watch that she had gifted Dave. Leah knows all that happened was because of Carter, and she decides to take Detective Hansen's help. Detective Hansen tells her that Carter had lied to her about his past, and that he did not even tell her his real name. He also told her that the only way she could seek justice would be by taking the matter into her own hands. Leah decides that she does not want anyone close to her, being murdered and getting herself a shotgun. Leah is out when she sees Carter with another woman, recalling the recent trauma that she went through. Because of Carter, Leah decides to warn the woman about Carter's nature. The woman freaks out and runs as fast as she can. Leah also files another restraining order against Carter and delivers it to Carter's boss, who then fires him. Carter is furious after he gets fired, decides to follow Carter, and finally finds finds his home. She breaks into his apartment using a crowbar and finds his computers. She then comes to realize that he had been spying on her. She is full of angry emotions and breaks all of his computers and spray paints his wall with the challenging words. Carter breaks into Leah's home that night to find her in a running shower. However, he did notice that she was not in the shower. Due to the steam, Leah is behind him with her gun and the two get into a physical brawl. Carter takes the gun away from her hand but Lee manages to get it back. Leah also slashes Carter with a knife she found lying around. She finally ends up shooting Carter with a gun. Carter goes crashing into the glass furniture behind him and ceases to exist. Lee then calls the police to report an intruder. Once the police arrive, they remove Carter's corpse from Lee's apartment. Here the movie ends. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Until then, take care.